Hey guys, Beast here once again. I am back with another edition of 16 Things You Wish You Knew Early in StarCraft. This time it's the Protoss edition. There's a lot of clips, tricks and tips in this one that I bet a lot of you didn't actually know because I never ever see them used in professional games or just the latter games in general. So I hope you guys learned something and I hope you enjoy this. So let's get started with number one. Number one, lifting the banelings with Phoenix, uh, once the banelings are killed while in the air, they will still do splash damage to the units on the ground. So you have to be careful when you play PvZ and when you lift the banelings, make sure there's no units running underneath uh, just as you kill the banelings. I'll show you guys how exactly that works. I'll be lifting some banelings. If I send the probes underneath and then I kill the banelings, you'll see that the probes underneath uh, die from the splash even though the banelings are killed in the air the dam the units on the ground still take full damage number two whenever you play uh, pvz pvt or pvp uh, sometimes you enter these base trade situations and you need to protect your main ramp or perhaps if you're using war prism you need to uh, force field the opponent ramp to not allow them to get reinforcements. The magic number in order to do this is exactly six sentries. Uh, after the sixth force field is down, the first sentry will regen the energy once again and you'll be able to basically force field the ramp forever. And that's something that you can use in your games wherever offensively or defensively, that's up to you. But six sentries is the magic number. Number three, whenever you play PvP, you probably had a lot of problems with uh, Adepts early on. Very common PvP opener is two shades to potentially kill your probes or just cut what you're doing. So as we know, if the opponent shades in through your shades, even if you have units at the ramp, the shades go through and it can kill uh, a bunch of your probes. So there's two ways to stop this. One way is to make a pylon at the wall so the shades cannot go through. But another way is to use your own shades to block the enemy shades. So I'll show you guys how to do it. It's pretty simple. If the opponent shades in, all you need to do is do your own shades, put them at the wall, and the blue shades cannot go through. So he is forced to either run back or you know fight your adapts, which you have the high ground for. So that, that's obviously not going to work. So once again, if the opponent shades in, all you need to do is use shades yourself put them on hold position and the opponent's shades cannot go in and then you can deny the scouting and you know save your probes from dying as well number four every time you pick up burrowed units uh, with your phoenix they will always get unburrowed even if you don't kill them uh, they will stay unburrowed until the opponent uses the burrow ability once again so Sometimes, even if you have one Phoenix or two Phoenix against two Widow Mines, you can just use those two Phoenix to, you know, unburrow the Widow Mines and just cause your opponent to have to burrow them again, thus avoiding the splash damage. So I'll show you guys here. If you go and pick up the two Widow Mines, if you move away, they're right now unburrowed, so the opponent has to burrow them in order to make them work. The same thing works with every single Zerg unit. So if I pick all of these Lurkers up, and I move away, the lurkers are unburrowed, which allows your units to then go forward. And even with the mobile units like infestors, once you pick them up and drop them, they become unburrowed. So that's just one thing uh, that you can use in your games that can be really, really helpful in the battles, even if you don't quite manage to actually kill the unit. Number five. There's a lot of ways to use your sentries once the energy is full, and I think hallucination is something that's probably the most underused uh, spell in the game. So one of the ways you can use your uh, hallucinations on sentries is if it comes down to a base trade situation against Terran or Protoss or Zerg, what you can do if you have a lot of energy, you can hallucinate a lot of probes and send them individually to each different base so if your opponent is trying to eliminate you he'll be chasing hallucinations and won't really know which probe is yours 
or you can just hallucinate um, a bunch of probes and put one real one in between so he won't really know which one to go for. Uh, another way you can use it is something you've probably seen in a lot of pro games, which is just hallucinated Phoenix sent to a lot of bases around in the main to scout what the opponent is doing. But one cool thing that can be done, which is even better, if you play against Terran, what you can do is hallucinate an oracle. So by doing that, you can send it to the main base and activate the Widow Mine that's defending the main base and then follow that up with um, your real oracle and get a bunch of kills on the SCVs. This obviously works against Protoss as well. You can force the opponent to use uh, pylon overcharges or if you're simply going for a robo, you can hallucinate an oracle or a phoenix and kind of fly it around the base, giving them the illusion that you're going for Stargate uh, when you're not. Another way you can use the hallucinations is if you know that the opponent doesn't have uh, observers which reveal your hallucinations or you know doesn't have scans, you can actually just hallucinate a bunch of units, uh, whether it's archons or stalkers or whatever else and just mix them with your already existing units and the opponent simply won't really know which ones are real and which ones are not so when he a moves with these units uh, you can put hallucinations forward and those units will be attacked first you know take a lot of damage for your actual units and it's just another cool way to get advantage into in fights when you have extra energy and sentries that you won't really use Number six, there's a lot more efficient way to blink your uh, stalkers up the ramp or, you know, up the cliffs uh, than doing this because sometimes you're going to have too many stalkers. Maybe you're going to have like this many stalkers where they're going to get clumped up. Not all of them would actually manage to blink up. So what you can do to prevent that is use the shift Q command in order to blink. So I'll send my stalkers from here. And at the end, I will actually select Oracle, just so you guys see that I'm not clicking anything. Everything is done through Shift-Q. So what I'll do is I'll send Stalkers here, then around just under the cliff, blink on top, and then keep moving forward. So what will happen is they will arrive at the location, and they will blink one by one, and they basically won't get stuck on one another, and you'll get really smooth blink-ins into the main bases. Obviously this would work, for example, if you wanted to blink from here uh, up in the opponent's base. And it would also work if you wanted to blink from your main base outside without getting your stalkers um, stuck. Because I, what I see a lot of the times happening is, let's say you're here and when people try to, uh, you know, they're going, they're trying to blink down, some stalkers are left up, some are down and like I said, in order to prevent that, all you need to do is just simply use shift click. I'll show you guys again. So if you're trying to go to the third base, shift Q to stalkers near the edge, blink down and then shift Q again for move. And you'll see a lot uh, smoother move movement from them. And you won't have to, you know, click a few times or try to get them really precise close to the edge in order for you to do this. Number seven. What a lot of you probably already know if you ever played Protoss in your life that two uh, Dark Templars morph into an Archon just like two High Templars morph into an Archon. But what some of you might not know is you don't actually need two Dark Templars or two High Templars. You can, war, uh, you can morph one High Templar and one Dark Templar into an Archon. This is rarely used, but there might be certain situations where, uh, you know, you would be able to, and it might save you some gas or minerals, depending on what you have. But either way, it is possible to morph these two and make an Archon, even though they're not the same unit. And one last thing that I wanted to tell you guys, which is more like an interesting fact rather than being uh, useful in the game. Dark Templars can actually have two weapons. So one weapon is the dagger, that Dark Templar can get, as you can see right there. And then another weapon that Dark Templar can get is a scythe. So this is completely random. There's no way to specifically summon these or warping these. 
Uh, it's just a cool fact that you might, you guys might not have known. Number eight. This is another scenario where you can use your Phoenix to their full potential. Every time you're in a battle where you get, uh, you know, overwhelmed with the opponent's units, but there's not anything that you necessarily want to pick up with your Phoenix and kill them, like these armies that we have right here. So we have a bunch of Ling Roach against a few Protoss units. And let's say your uh, reinforcements is arriving, but the Zerg engages on you. What you can do is until your reinforcements arrives, you can pick up your expensive units and, you know, just wait until your reinforcements arrives and you just pick up your units with the Phoenix and just wait till, you know, more of your units arrive and the Zerg can't really do much about it unless they have uh, anti-air units. So you can do these things with your High Templars, you can do this with your Immortals, uh, Disruptors, just buying yourself time until more units show up and you're able to, you know, save these units either by killing the Zerg or picking them up with the War Prism. Number nine. One of the ways to kill the Widow Mine when you open Sargat against Terrans is actually to just kill the Widow Mine with your Oracle. Uh, I'm not sure how many people actually knew this was possible, but you don't need Phoenix to kill a Widow Mine if the Widow Mine has no support. All you need is a little bit of micro and the vision on the Widow Mine. So I'll show you guys how it's done. You have a revelation and you can pick off the Widow Mine just by using the Oracle itself. You can see that the Widow Mine is trying to lock on and it does lock on, but if you do it at the proper time and move out of the, the lock on range and then go back in, the Widow Mine locks on, you move out, you can simply kill the, the Widow Mine and then you know, feel free to kill everything else in the mineral line that, um, that Terran has. Number 10. Every time you play PvP, if you're in a situation where the opponent has Phoenix and you have Adepts or vice versa, picking up the Adepts while they're shading will actually get them out of the Phoenix lift. So the best way to, to show this is just uh, do it. So if we have Adepts on the right shading, You'll see I'll pick them up when the shade is three seconds uh, off from finishing and you'll see that the shades will go through even though the adepts are being lifted by Phoenix. So that's uh, one cool interaction that you guys uh, might have not known about. So anyway, let's go. The shades go off. If you pick up all the adepts at this point, the shades will simply go through as if they were not picked up and then the Phoenix will be forced to lift them again and if you manage to get away in time and if they get picked up again the shades can you know simply finish once again and go through number 11 i'm going to show you guys how the stasis trap works once the units are inside of it and how to properly reactivate your stasis trap so if the units enter the stasis trap if you cast another one on top of them it will go off, but it won't prolong the, the duration of the stalkers inside of it. So that's not what you want to do. What you want to do is when it's around four seconds, you want to start casting it then because it takes four seconds to set up the stasis trap. So if the stalker's duration is about three seconds off, you start uh, making another stasis trap, which is four second cast time, and it will re-trap the unit. So you can obviously use this against all three races. So once again, five, four, three, you can start casting. Oh, I think I messed up. Nope, perfect timing. So all you need to do is once it's around four, three, four or three seconds, you start casting the uh, stasis trap again. It will re-trap the unit. So don't do something like this where, you know, the units are still inside and you cast it because it obviously won't work and it won't uh, re-trap them after that. Number 12. If you're attacking, for example, Terran player on the natural, even though this is a Protoss, I mean, this works against every race, and you can't really go in there, but you have a bunch of units and a War Prism. What you can do is put a War Prism around this area, and all you need to do is click these units into the War Prism and keep clicking uh, D onto the War Prism. And what it will do, D is a hotkey for unload. So let's say the Zealots... Uh, leave 
you can click these units onto the war prism and every time they get loaded you can just spam D and that way transfer your units really fast into um, the opponent's main base and that way you know avoid fighting them straight on and then you can maybe force field the ram here uh, warp more units if you will and go on from there number 13 Whenever you're in a situation, whether it's a base trade or you just lost a pylon, but you need a, a, an upgrade to finish uh, really quickly and you don't really want to wait for a pylon to build all the way, one thing you can do is use the warp prism to actually power up your building. So as we see, these warp gates are now off because there's no pylon nearby. If you just set up the warp prism, you can use it once again. Uh, you can use the warp gates once again or let your upgrades finish. And once the war prism is removed, the gates will be unpowered again, which by then uh, your pylon should be finishing up. Or you can just leave the war prism there whole game if you don't want to remake a pylon. Another cool thing you can do with the war prism, you can actually cannon rush with it. So if you load some units uh, into your war prism, you can drop it in the Zerg or, or Terran base or even Proto space, and you can still start building cannons underneath. And you don't actually need a pylon. Uh, to build them and they will be shooting even without a pylon as you can see but if you're already doing this uh, kind of strategy you probably want to build an extra pylon after that just to be safe so your war prison doesn't get sniped and you know you lose all your cannons number 14 one of the ways you can use the oracle this is uh, specifically used against zerg the most even though it works against probes and scvs in PvZ, once the Zerg player has a Spore and Queens, it becomes kind of risky to try to poke in and kill the drones with the Oracle. So one way you can use the Oracle extremely effectively is just case cast Stasis Trap behind the mineral lines. This obviously works on every map and every base. So for example, if I come here, I can just cast the Stasis Trap right here. And even if the Queen is attacking, the DPS isn't enough. And as you can see, Almost the whole mineral line is now prevented from mining and the Zerg player will lose a lot of income even though you're not necessarily killing the drones. Uh, you can do this whenever you have the energy and if you have another oracle you can send it to the main or third base and do this as well. And in order to, for the Zerg to defend this he would need to pull the drones every time and lose the minerals, the mineral income. And the only thing you're trading is the energy on the Oracle. Number 15. Sometimes in your games, probes get stuck in between the buildings. And there are certain situations that you can use to actually make your probe um, get out of those situations very easily. So, for example, if you're building something around the gas uh, like this, let's say you build two pylons. The probe is now stuck. As you can see, it can't really move unless you would cancel the pylons. What you can do if you're near the gas like this, you can build the gas. And what that does is uh, gets the probe basically out. It won't be stuck anymore here. And if I cancel the gas, you can't really go into that position anymore. So if you're ever in a situation where the probe uh, is stuck between your buildings or enemy buildings and the gas, you can do that. Um, on the other side, if you have a wall off like this, for example, if you're pylon rushing your opponent and your probe is left on the inside, what you can do is, again, the probe cannot move out um, from any side. If you make a pylon on top of the probe, it will force the probe to get out and freeing the probe for you to you know, make cannons or make more buildings or do whatever you wanted to do with the probe initially. Number 16. Just like the scenario where I showed you guys earlier with the Phoenix, Lifting Adepts, and Shades uh, finishing, the same thing actually works with Stasis Trap. So if I have Adepts on the left side, I shade and walk into the trap, my Adepts will get, uh, you know, frozen. But once the Shades finish, they will get unfrozen. You can move them uh, freely, which is an actual, actually an interaction I found out about recently. So again... If you click shade and you walk into a stasis trap, even though they're frozen for a very, very long time, once the shades finish, you can move your adepts uh, freely. So if you're ever in a situation where you notice a stasis trap, 
you know, you can uh, use shades, walk into them, and your depths will be absolutely fine after that. And that is the end for the 16 things you wish in your early in StarCraft 2 Protoss edition. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new today. Let me know in the comments which one surprised you the most and which one you've never seen before, but will definitely try and use in your own games. If you did like the video, make sure you like and subscribe for future videos like this one. And if you didn't see one of my previous videos, the Zerg edition and the kind of general edition that covers all three races, make sure you check the links above me and I'll see you guys next time.